everyone. It is time to begin. It's great to see everyone out. It's a windy day. Uh, everybody coming in with their hair a little bit more than usual. It's good. <laughs> Even me. So uh, <laughs> it's good to see you here today. A reminder, if we have visitors, please fill out a visitor's card. And if you have a cell phone, please turn that off so that we don't have it going off during worship this morning. Uh, reminder that to pick up your communion supplies on the table on the way in if you didn't already. And uh, also a reminder of our uh, first three rows on each side for those who aren't able to wear masks. And then uh, everyone else should have their mask on throughout the service, please. Reminder to uh, remember our missionary work in Zimbabwe with uh, Balape, the great work he does. Really appreciate the good reports we get from him and uh, how hard he continues to work even through the, the impact of the pandemic there. I want to remember the work in Grant County that Jason and Maria Carter are doing. Uh, really good uh, results, really good uh, work he's got going on there. Uh, we have been trying to have a few folks go down on Sunday, right now it's Sunday afternoons, to help support Jason. They are meeting at 4 p.m. during the winter time, uh, kind of between the time, uh, time changes. So uh, if you want to go down and support Jason and that work, uh, that's 4 o'clock down at Grant County. Uh, Wesley will be preaching there next Sunday, so I know he'd like to have some, uh, some folks come down to support him. And any of our young men who want to help lead that service next Sunday, the 22nd, uh, you're, we'll, we'll put you to work if, if you're able to go down and be with us at Grant County next Sunday. I also want to remember uh, Brian Hall, missionary work he does, Steve Haley, and our own Dave Harris. I uh, also want to thank Dave for the Sunday evening classes he's been doing for us. And just remind everyone that those classes are available. If you want to join live, he does those at 6 p.m. on Sunday evenings. Uh, if you can't make it live, I uh, really encourage everyone to view the class later sometime during the week. Uh, you will be uh, encouraged by Dave's lessons. So really appreciate Dave doing those lessons for us. Uh, it's great to have Brian and Lydia here this morning. Great to see you guys. We are excited to have uh, our new minister, Brian uh, Gizelbaugh. He should be here two weeks from today, the 29th. Uh, so excited for that. Please pray for them in their transition. Also excited for them, they have a new granddaughter who was born this week, Julia, I believe uh, was her first name. So uh, excited for the Gizelbaugh's. Brett, you're an uncle again. I know, exciting. Uh, all right, so uh, please pray for Brian and Beth as they transition here. Reminder that we have a congregational meeting scheduled for the 7th of December. That's a Monday night, and that will be at 7 p.m. Uh, we met, uh, all the, uh, the um, elders and deacons met last Saturday, had a really good planning session, and we'll be able to uh, present those plans to you on the 7th of December. Please mark your calendars for that. Holiday baskets uh, will be prepared here at the building on Saturday, the 12th of December. Judy put up a sign-up sheet. I saw her do it. There's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board in the back if you're able to help out with those. If you have questions, see Judy, please. All right. Second prayer requests. I want to continue to remember those who are not able to get out. Uh, Tootsie, Frank Chris, uh, Dan and Carol Link, Cheryl Piles, the Hackers, the Cottrells, the Myers, uh, Year Keys, uh, Debbie and Pauline, Hope I haven't forgotten anyone, but I, I know all of those have been staying in because of uh, virus concerns. So remember them in our prayers. Reach out to them. Uh, I know they miss being here. Saw on Facebook this week that Faye Cole's daughter is diagnosed with COVID. Want to pray for her. Uh, some friends of the Harrises. Uh, I think that was about a week and a half ago. It was mentioned that they are they doing better? Good, good. So. Uh, Keep them in your prayers, but Wendy says they're doing better. That's good news. A friend of Marsha's and an uh, acquaintance of mine, Barb Tharp, uh, worked at Western Southern for many years. She's been in the hospital with COVID, hoping she gets to come home soon. Uh, so it sounded fairly encouraging there. Also, Patsy Ainsworth is now back in her own home in Texas. They're continuing to kind of get weaned off of the oxygen after she had about a two, close to two months in the hospital with the coronavirus, so I want to keep Patsy in our prayers. Also, the Cottrells and Myers, they had two uh, 
relatives, I believe it was Adam's aunt and uncle that passed away uh, within the last few weeks. I want to keep those families in our prayers. And then uh, a couple of friends of Sharon, uh, Hannah Botts and Frank Cox, I want to keep them in our prayers as well. Did I overlook anything? Is there anything else I need to mention? Let's go to God in prayer. Almighty God, we thank you so much for this day, this opportunity, this privilege to come together and worship you. Lord, there are many on our hearts and minds, many that we just mentioned, uh, that have, are either uh, struggling currently with the coronavirus or are in various stages of recovery. Lord, we thank you for those who are recovering and have recovered. Uh, we do want to continue to remember them in our prayers. Lord, we want to pray that you would continue to help them with the recovery and that they would make a full recovery from this. Lord, we are thankful that uh, Brenda Jerry is here with us this morning. She's had a very difficult year. We pray, continue, Lord, to pray for her and her health and pray that she would uh, continue to feel well, continue to feel well enough to be out and about and enjoy uh, everything she wants to do. As her and her husband prepare to uh, go to California for a few weeks, we pray that, that would be, uh, they'd be able to make that trip and everything would go smoothly for them there. Uh, Lord, we pray for the Gilsabaw family and the uh, transition they're making to move in here, move here and be with us. Uh, we pray for them through the stress of moving, the stress of uh, finding a new home, and we pray that we would be encouraging to them and that they would be uplifted by us as, as, and that they will be a great encouragement and help to us in the work here. Uh, we thank you for the safe arrival of their new granddaughter and pray for her and her family as, as they get acclimated and she gets uh, to be home and part of her, her family. Lord, we pray for our country. We just uh, are all very weary from this pandemic and we just pray that it could uh, be behind us soon. We pray that you'd help all the government leaders, church leaders, school leaders, business leaders, all those who are trying to make decisions around what's best for, uh, for whatever area that they are in. And we just pray, Lord, that we would all be, uh, do our best to maintain good attitudes, do our best to maintain our faith and our trust in you throughout this time. Also, Lord, with the uh, stresses and things with the recent election, we pray that we would all have good attitudes and do our best to, uh, to get through that as well. Lord, as we begin our worship now, we pray that you would bless uh, our singing to you, that we would bring honor and glory and praise to your great name through our songs this morning. And Lord, we pray for Jonathan as he presents the lesson. So grateful for him and his service to you, all that he's uh, done to help us through these uh, last few months with his teaching. And Lord, we also thank you for Dave and all he's done to help us in our uh, sermons and the classes he's doing. Lord, we just continue to thank you for him and his family. Lord, please bless us now as we worship you. In Christ's name, amen. Pull out the songbooks if we need to. All right, I'm going to grab a song. <laughs> oh, oh, look at that. Okay. Hey, at least you know that you still can use them now. <clears throat> Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation. 
righteous of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture, now verse on my side. Angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Our song before our lesson, I can't talk, I had a hair in my mouth. Our song before our lesson will be Wonderful Story of Love. <clears throat> Wonderful story of love, tell it to me again. Wonderful story of love, wake the immortal strain. Angels with rapture announce it, shepherds with wonder receive it. Sinner, oh, won't you believe it? Wonderful story of love. Wonderful, 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 wonderful story of love. Wonderful story of love, though you are far away. Wonderful story of love, still he doth call today. Calling from Calvary's mountain, down from the crystal bright fountain. In from the dawn of creation, wonderful story of love, wonderful, 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 wonderful story of love, wonderful story of love. Jesus provides a rest. Wonderful story of love for all the pure and blessed. Rest in those mansions above us with those who've gone on before us. Singing the rapturous chorus Wonderful story of love, wonderful, 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 wonderful story of love. I promise the screen is not broken, just no PowerPoint. Um, thank you for everyone uh, joining us for worship this morning. Uh, I am sorry if you came expecting Dave, uh, but uh, just remember he does have his, 
He does have his class. Um, I recommend going and, and listening to that. And if you've missed any, they're all on uh, Facebook, right? So pretty easy to access um, and, and go back and even rewatch. Uh, welcome to all of our visitors, including my uh, mother in law today. I would like to try and say that she came to see me, but I think we all know that's not the truth. <laughs> um, I really have gotten you so used to teaching from up here. I really just want to start with uh, today. We've got our twelfth class on Revelation, but uh, speaking of Revelation, uh, one of the major themes of the book is God victorious. In light of that, and again, my focus has been so on Revelation. Um, today, our message is going to be about trusting in the Lord. First. What is trust? You know, we always go through the di dictionary definition, um, but the, the dictionary definition is firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. And we'll discuss that definition kind of as we get deeper into it. We may not 100% stick to just that. Today I want to view it through two lenses, and this is where um, Revelation comes in. First, I want to view it through the churches to whom Revelation was written. So you may want to keep a marker in Revelation chapter 2, 3. Um, we'll see some application of trust in God through uh, the letters to these churches. There is an often referenced passage, and that is kind of where we'll be uh, framing the rest of this from, in Proverbs chapter 3. You may already know where I'm, I'm head, uh, heading with this, but Proverbs chapter 3, uh, we'll read verses 5 through 8 here. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. We're going to be taking this path verse by verse for our points this morning. So keep a marker in Revelation and kind of keep uh, another one or your finger here. Uh, we'll be going back and forth for these. So the first verse here. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understandings. When it comes to trust, the first thing that we see is the involvement of both the heart and the mind in trust. You know, with all of your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding with the thought of the mind. Matthew chapter 22, verses 35 through 38. Matthew 22, 35 through 38, it says, And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. You know, again, when I was reading through that thought of both heart and mind, that's the first thing that came to mind was that thought of how we are to love God. Also, similar to this passage in Matthew, uh, there's that all, that word all that appears that I think is really important. This is not a partial proposition when it comes to trusting God. It requires total commitment, and the heart and mind indicate a complete focus on this. Now, when it comes to the churches, this was a failing of Laodicea. If you would go to uh, Revelation chapter 3. We'll read verses 15 through 17 um, in regards to Laodicea. I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. Would that you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich, I have prospered, and I need nothing, not realizing that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. For context, and we talked about we originally went through these uh, in Revelation. They were a prominent center of banking and commerce used to relying on themselves 
and their own understanding, um, including their understanding about themselves, as we see was an issue here uh, as the letter is written to Laodicea. In addition, I think something that will help us put our complete trust, heart and mind in God, is remember the one in whom we are placing our trust. Isaiah 55. We've gone to this several times, but I hope if I went the right direction. It's one, I think, there's a reason why passages are our favorite, and usually it's because there's, there's something important in them. Verses 7 through 11. So Isaiah 55, 7 through 11. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he may have compassion on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways, uh, your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Again, that amazing comparison between our thoughts and God's thoughts. Why should we not trust in someone whose ways and whose thoughts are so much more uh, advanced and incredible than our own? In addition to that, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Uh, we'll read verses 18 through 27. It says, As surely as God is faithful... No, oh, 1 Corinthians, that would be helpful. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verses 18 through 27 still. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and big them. We preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to the Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful, not many were of noble birth, but God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise, and God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. Not only are his thoughts so much higher than ours, but think about the power of God in his ability to frustrate earthly wisdom. You know, if there's any reason why we shouldn't trust in ourselves, it's because God's wisdom is higher than ours, and his power is so much beyond uh, what we are able to accomplish. And he's able to and will frustrate earthly wisdom. So, after putting our trust completely in God, heart and mind, that takes us back to, Pro uh, back to uh, Proverbs here. Six. I'm going to put my it will be easier for me. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. In this verse is a key component for the Christian in trust. So remember that definition we talked about before. It's a firm truth or something, but there's more to it than that when it comes to trust. Trust requires action. How do the things that I do, so my ways, acknowledge him? First, many people look to God in times of anxiety and distress, but they don't act upon what he said. 
They believe in him, but they don't listen to him. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 verses 20. It says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do mighty works in your name? I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. that Sardis had difficulties with. Uh, Revelation 3 verses 1 through 3. And to the angel of the church in Sardis write, the words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know your works. You have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. Remember then what you have received and heard. Keep it and repent. If you will not wake up, I will come like a thief. And you will not know at what hour I will come again. We actually trust in God if we don't act on it. Okay. Practical example. Let's say Jerry sees my tire is flat. He says, hey, you need to get that taken care of. If not, it's going to cause massive damage to your car. If I hear that and I say, Jerry, I trust you, but then I continue to drive on what's left of the tire, what's left on the rim, do I actually trust what Jerry told me? No. If we don't act upon the thing that we're told, we don't actually trust. If we trust trust in God, We will take what he wants into account in everything that we do. That's why it says, again, that word, in all your ways. In addition to that, what we do before others acknowledge. Back in Matthew 5, verses 14 through 16, uh, another very familiar passage. It says, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Through the good things that we do in Christ, it will acknowledge the Father because they will give glory, be able to give glory to Him. They will see who, who we work for and the, thing, the reason why we do the things that we do. If we do these, if we, if we trust in Him and we act on it, he makes, the, he makes the path straight. It doesn't mean that we're not going to have difficulties, we're not going to have troubles, struggles, but it's a lot harder to stumble into sin when our focus and our emphasis in life is on being pleasing to God. I think about, as I was, as I was looking about this and the, the straight paths, navigation by the stars. The wise men sought Christ by following his star. And seafarers have used star navigation for years. It was, it was this reminder to me of the need to look up to stay on course. We look up to God so that we can stay on course because he will make sure that our path is straight. But no matter how straight the path, we can't reach the destination without moving, without action. Back in Proverbs, verse 7, we get to our third point. So if we're trusting with everything, we're acting upon Verse 7, it says, Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Again, like Laodicea, we can't afford to be deceived by our own self-perception. Fear. What does fear have to do with trust? Fear, is, fear of God is trust in the promise of punishment for the wicked that he has made. This is important for both the believer and the unbeliever. Consider 
the warning that is given to Ephesus in Revelation chapter 2. Revelation 2 verses 4 4 and 5. It says, But I have this against you. You have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember therefore from where you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. If they trust, if they trusted in God, they would understand that when he makes a promise like that, he will hold true to it. And again, since we're in Revelation, um, I think of the messages of the three angels in Revelation 14. So verses 6 through 12 of Revelation 14, it says, Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give Him glory, because the hour of His judgment has come, and worship Him who has made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. Another angel, a second, followed, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, she who made all nations drink the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality. And another angel, a third, followed him, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and its image and receives a mark on his forehead or on his hand, he also will drink the wine of God's wrath, poured full strength into the cup of his anger, and he will be tormented with fire and sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, these worshipers of the beast and its image, and whoever receives the mark of its name." Here is a call for the endurance of the saints, those who keep the commandments of God and their faith. If we trust in God, we will not only do good, but seek to turn away from evil. As I think about those two warnings given uh, there in Revelation, just imagine being removed from the fellowship of God and His church. And the terrifying nature, and I still, I, I still pause on these words, the terrifying nature of God's wrath poured full strength into the cup of His anger. We trust in His capability to punish in awe-inspiring power, and that should make us avoid evil like the plague it really is. Back in Proverbs... As we continue on, the, on this path, um, verse 8, it says, It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. So here we see additional benefit that we can receive by trusting in the Lord. Note, um, my, my translation here uh, translates it as flesh. The word flesh can also be uh, translated as navel. It's the same word that's used in Ezekiel 16, uh, verse 4, uh, which is understood because it talks about uh, when you were born, you were not cut, your navel was not cut. Um, it's a, understood as a reference to the umbilical cord connection, which I think is helpful in us understanding this. Remember that that connection is the very source of life and strength for the child. It was figuratively understood as the center of strength. Trusting in God and focusing on Him with everything. Acting in ways that He would want and turning away from evil can literally have a, an impact on our physical life here. And, and there's, there'll be more to it, but the stress and worry in our lives can have physical consequences. You hear stories of stress negatively impacting health. And I found something, uh, an article from the Harvard Medical School uh, Health Publishing that I think helps to outline this. It says, there's no question that stress can exert real physiologic effects on the body, including the heart. This is most true in the case of severe and sudden or acute stress. People who've received traumatic news, like the death of a child, have in rare cases suffered an immediate heart attack. This isn't just an anxiety attack. 
When you do a cardiac catheterization procedure on them, an artery that was previously open is now closed, says Dr. Deepak Bhatt, Director of Integrated Interventional Cardiovascular Program at Brigham and, Women, uh, Brigham and Women's Hospital. The condition is known as broken heart syndrome, and it is much more common in women, even those with no history of heart disease, Dr. Bott says. Stress and worry can literally kill you. But being able to trust in God is able to bring healing to, as it said, the center of our strength and as deep as our bones. But more importantly than any physical impact that being able to trust in God is, it brings healing for our eternal life. Back in Revelation, chapter 2. Revelation 2, verses 8 through 11. Let's take a look at Smyrna. And the angel of the church in Smyrna write, The words of the first and the last, who died and came to life, I know your tribulation and your poverty, but you are rich. And the slander of those who say that the Jews, uh, who, they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested. And for ten days you will have tribulation. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who conquers will not be hurt by the second death. Trusting in God and acting upon that trust will let us gain the crown of life and not be hurt by the second death. Again, we think of life here. Um, 1 Peter 5, verses 6 and 7. It says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time He may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on Him, because He cares for you. If we truly trust Him, we will cast, we will tell Him our worries, our cares, and we will understand that he is able to help us. You know, sometimes we cling on to those things, not willing to fully cast them on to him. We don't really trust him if we're not, allow if we're not allowing him to fully take on our anxieties. It is so refreshing, as it talked about a refreshment to the bones. It's so refreshing and wonderful to trust in God. Remember how powerful and how high his thoughts are above ours. He can handle any situation more effectively than I can. I just need to keep trusting in him and acting upon that trust. Philippians 4, verses 11 through 13. It says, Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. And in every and any circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. With God, I know I can make it through anything that should happen to me in this life. If I didn't have trust in him, I would be so very lost. Knowing what it means to trust in God, do you? Have you given him everything of who you are? Heart, mind, action. Have you submitted to him and become his servant, trusting by acting on the plan that he laid out for your salvation? If you've done that, have you trusted in his promises for rewarding obedience and punishment for disobedience by acting upon his word and avoiding evil? If your answer to any of these questions is no, you need to repent. We have now the time for you to confess, to make the needed changes, and to reap the benefits of trusting in our all-powerful God. If you have the need to come forward or if you have the need of the prayers of the church, 
Come as we stand and sing our invitation song. and minds for taking the Lord's Supper is hallelujah, what a Savior. If you have it, let us sing. Man of sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came ruined sinners to Still my pardon with 
song we'll sing. Hallelujah, what a Savior. We think about this part of our worship. One of the verses you typically go to is in 1 Corinthians 11, 25 and 26. Uh, as I did that this week, I got into a little bit of a word study. One of the words there it says is, do this in remembrance of me. So I thought about that in remembrance, and I looked up several verses. Some of these are going to sound familiar after Jonathan's uh, lesson. But the first one that I wanted to read comes from Revelation 2. And it starts in verse 4. But I have this against you. You have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember, therefore, where you have fallen, repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove the lampstand from its place unless you repent. Also in chapter 3, we read, Remember then what you received and heard. Keep it and repent. If you will not wake up, I will come like a thief in the night and will, <clears throat> you will not know what hour I will come against you. Then I went to Ephesians 2, starting in verse 11. Therefore, remember that at once, at one time, you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of the promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh, dividing the wall of hostility. So as we think about this act of worship, let's remember what Christ did for us. Where we were before and where we need to be after. So let's go to God in prayer. Father God in heaven, we are so thankful for this time that we have to come around the table to remember your life, uh, Christ's life, his death, his burial, uh, his sacrifice that he made on our behalf. We pray that as we take of this bread, we'll think of the, and remember the broken body that took our sins on it, and that we will do so in a manner that's pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, we come again so thankful for that sacrifice that was made on our behalf as we remember the cruel death and the blood that was shed to wash away our sins. We pray that we will remember that and that we will live in a way that will demonstrate our remembrance of that as uh, we go through our lives. We pray that you would bless this cup we would take it in a way that's pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would, please stand with me as we sing the song.
Do you have it? Let's sing. Beyond this land of parting, losing and leaving, far beyond the losses, darkening this, and far beyond the taking and the bereaving, lies the summer land of bliss. Land beyond, so fair and bright. Land beyond. something there, it's okay. I'm not. Um, if there are no further announcements, um, I will lead us in a closing prayer and uh, pray for the offering in the back. And then remember, we always leave from the back pews first, and then we'll make our way out. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day of worship you've given to us to come and hear another portion of your word and and to praise your name, Heavenly Father. We're so thankful, Father, for this time that we also have to give back a portion to you of what you've given to us. We pray, Father, that those of us that do give, that we do it in a cheerful way and that it's pleasing to you. We ask, Father, that you be with the church the world over. We ask, Father, that our mission here is to seek and save the lost. We pray, Father, for those that were mentioned today that are sick or ill or, or in the hospital. Those that are spiritually ill, we pray, Father, that you be with them and heal them and uh, so they can come back to us. We just ask, Father, also to keep us safe and thank you for the health that we do have. Be with us now, Father, as we leave this place and uh, keep us safe until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.